Okay. Well, Johan, the you you brought up social media, so I, I wanted to ask. You know, Pat brought up radio. We pr- talked about TV, even computers, every even video games, anything that fits in that category. That's all stuff you did at home, and then it was time for you to yeah. get out the get out the house, walk away, and then go live your life and do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Now this goes everywhere with you. Okay, so I, my question is, how much of that is related to? This goes everywhere with you. And how much is the, like, there's so many pros and cons you could talk about with the phone, but is this the biggest culprit these days? You know, this is something I thought about a lot because I actually, at the start of researching Stolen Focus, I basically had two stories about why my attention had gotten fucked. One was, I thought, well, you're just, you're lacking in willpower. You're weak. Why aren't you strong enough to just not look at this shit, right? Mm -hmm. And the other story I had was, well, someone invented the smartphone, right? That was so, and and fucked me that way, right? So because those were the two stories, I later learned it's much more complicated what's going on and we need a different kind of solution. But at the start, my response was, okay, I'm just sick of this. I'm tired of being wired. I want to get my brain back. So I went away for three months with no smartphone and no laptop. How did you survive without, for three months? It was really, you know, it's fascinating. I was really lucky because uh, the film rights to one of my previous books is sold. So I had a bit of money and I went to this place called Provincetown in Cape Cod. And it was interesting because there was lots of ups and downs. But the thing that amazed me, and I think really speaks to your question, is, you know, I was nearly 40. I thought, oh, maybe, I, maybe my attention's worse come to getting older. Mm-hmm. My attention went back to being as good as it had been when I was 17. I could sit and read a book for eight hours and not get distracted. It blew my mind how much my attention came back. And at the end, of, and I later realized there were lots of changes I made, like to what I eat in those three months that were also affecting my attention. And I learned about this from scientists later. But I remember at the end of those three months, just saying to myself, well, I'm never going to go back to how I used to live. Why would I go back? This is amazing, right? The pleasures of focus, of being able to follow through on a goal, the pleasures of being able to think deeply, have deep conversations are so much greater than the shitty rewards of getting likes and whatever. I'm never going to go back. And then I got a boat across to Boston to my friend who I'd left my phone and my laptop with. And within a month, I was, I never quite went back to as bad as I've been, but I went like 80% back to where I've been. And I only really understood why when later I went to interview an amazing man named Dr. James Williams. Dr. James Williams had worked at the heart of Google, part of the machinery that is fucking up our ability to focus and pay attention. And he was really uncomfortable with what they were doing. One day he spoke at a tech conference to the people who are designing the things that obsess your kids mm-hmm. and you know, and all of us. Yep. And he said to them, if there's anyone here who wants to live in the world that we're creating, put up your hand now and not one of them put up their hand because they are all being hijacked by their own creation. This was in a group of students? Or no, this is a tech conference. Tech, tech conference. designers gotcha. who are designing like the stuff that you use all the time, right? And, and he quit and he became, I would argue, the leading expert on attention in the world. And he said to me, look, the mistake you made when you went away for three months and just thought you could hide from it, he said, it's like thinking the solution to air pollution is for you personally to wear a gas mask, Right. I mean, if I lived in Beijing, I'd wear a gas mask, right? There's a case for gas masks. But we've actually got to solve the problem instead of just trying to hide from it. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.